Last time on Professor Layton in the Unwound Future. Let me tell you one day, Barton, you ever become the, uh, the commissioner, put in a good word for me, will you? Oh, uh, sir, by the time I become commissioner, I'm pretty sure you'll be retired. Because it's going to be at least 29 years after this, and that's at the very, very least. The very least. And now, back to time travel. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to some more Professor Layton in the Unwound Future. The last time we left it off, we started the game. Um, real quick, before we get into anything, I need to check these bonuses, because I want to, uh, load that one password. The hidden door. Ticket, a ticket to time travel. Oh, we're getting some more, um... Oh! Password to sequel's hidden door. There we go. Alrighty, now that we got that. Uh, I can't quite tell what that is. is oh! Oh, the Leighton Mobile. That's cool. Mmm, I don't know who any of those guys are. Oh, old design's a full sense, I assume. Can I just actually... Oh, the castle. Alrighty. Yeah, concept art collection. Cool. Oh, Voluntary Express, original sketch. That's pretty cool looking. Cool. Curious gift and concept art. All right. Well, now let's go back to Lost Future. All right. 4F3G4E0B. Well, here we are, Luke. We're standing outside the hidden door for this game. Yep. What kind of puzzle do you think suppose? What kind of puzzle do you suppose is waiting for us inside? Itching to find out, are you? I certainly am. Well then, let's not keep you or our Steam player in suspense any longer. Here's a little gift from us to you. It's gonna be another make a picture puzzle. Oh God. Oh, it's Anton. Oh, cool. So we meet again, Professor. It's Anton, your rival from Professor Layton in Pandora's box, and I'm here to present you with a most pleasing puzzle. Can you get the gem out of this complex box by moving it to the spot indicated by the arrows? I want you to enjoy this puzzle in its purest form, so I'll provide you with no silly hints. Ha <laughs> ha Oh, you wanna play that, huh? Well, um, I'll just take an hour to figure this out like I did last time. Huzzah! <laughs> Alrighty! Excellent. I see you haven't lost the puzzle-solving skills that you got all the way through Pan Professor Layton and Pandora's box. That reminds me, I'm sure you will understand if I ask you to keep if you uh, if I ask you to keep my identity to yourself. So long then. <laughs> and that's it, huh? Cool. Alrighty then. I guess we don't get a teaser for the next game, but that's fine. I guess that's well. No, I was reading for Last Spectre that while they were making this game. Creator was like, man, so many people are like, is this going to be the end? And I'm like, and he was like, no, I don't want it to be the end. But I guess they, they he wasn't really sure what the next game wanted to be. He just knew he wanted to do a second season, so, so to speak. Luke and Layton encounter Dr. Schrader in Green Hospital. The doctor instructs the pair to head to the back of the hospital where they find the Layton mobile. Oh, do we get to meet future Luke this episode? In the car, they find another letter from future Luke telling them where to meet him. Who is played by Yuri Lowenthal, by the way. I looked it up. I was like, it has to be, right? And lo and behold, of course it is. Luke and Lane head for the Glided 7 Casino on Flatstone Street. I wonder when Don Paolo's going to show up. He's got to be in this game, right? Um... We need to take the train back to Flatstone Street if we're going to visit the casino, Luke. Okay, Professor. Let's go back to Flatstone Street. Travel to this destination. Oh god, this is gonna be a big area with a whole ton of puzzles. No wonder there's over 165. Bum, bum. Here we are, back on Flatstone Street. Yes, but I can't see anything around here that looks like a casino. I think our best bet would be, ask, would be to ask a local. Oh look, there's someone we can ask. Wait here, Professor. <laughs> You've got exactly... Five seconds, stop, stop, gawping, get, gawping, gawping, boy. One, two. Oh, I'm very sorry, sir. I gather that didn't go very well, Luke. Let's ask someone else, Professor. I can't even look at that man without him snapping at me. And all this time, I thought you had a talent for communicating with wild animals. <laughs> Don't laugh, Professor. That man was scary. 
Now, now, don't look so sour. I was only trying to lighten the mood a little. Why don't we find someone else to help us? <laughs> Hello there. Ah, there's a lovely breeze blowing through London today. I couldn't agree more. It's a perfect day to find a nice grassy spot near the river or to go for a walk. Speaking of walks, my hubby and I came up this great puzzle while we were out one day. 20... Yes! Thank God we finally got puzzle 19. All right, the bridge black. The bridge below has been painted in a black and white check pattern. Starting from the bottom left arrow, you need to cross the bridge and finish at the top right arrow. You can move one square at a time, either up, down, left, or right. You can't move diagonally. Now here's a tricky part. How many different routes across are that? How many different routes across are there that cross exactly four black squares and three white squares? Um. I think there's 15 if I've counted correctly. Let's see. I've got a good feeling about this one. Boom! That's what I'm talking about. Correct the mundo. like a puzzle solved. Yeah. That's right. There's 15 different. Oh yeah, a lot more roots than I thought. But alrighty. Here, clever one. You know you work there. I used to have one of my hobby back then. You can't remember that. Used to. Sadly, those carefree walks and decisions we got here. Must be working on like a dog. That new job is because it hardly ever comes home. I was kind of hoping you'd tell me what that casino is, but you know, it's fine. I didn't need anything from you. What about you, dude? Aww! What do you want from me? Please don't have a begging you. Well, why are you scared of me? You? No, it's your friend there with the b b big hat. Oh, he's looking right at me. Please calm down, sir. I mean you no harm. You must confuse me with someone else. The only thing I want to know is the location of the Gilded Seven Casino. It is around here, isn't it? The casino? Oh, I get it. You're testing me. You want to see if Edgar's going to spill the b b beans? And if I do, you're going to send me on a one-way trip to nowhere. What are you talking about? Oh, uh, someone help me. There he goes again. Poor fellow. Sounds as though he's had a run-in with someone who looks like me. He's not the first person to react strangely to a hat. Hmm, yes, yeah, so he's my doppelganger. has quite a fearsome reputation. Well... Maybe you should take your hat off for the time being, just to avoid confusion, you know? No! <laughs> Nonsense, Luke. A gentleman can't very well walk around with a bare head, now can he? Uh, I suppose not. Well, what's our next move? That girl from the hotel, Becky, has been quite helpful. We'll try asking her for directions. Talk to B -B Becky. I'm kind, of, I'm kind of glad they're not doing the whole, um... The, the professor and Luke decide to go do this because I don't know that is like was there really a need to do that every time? Hmm, you're looking for the Gilded Seven Casino? Yeah, so we're supposed to meet someone there. Well, if you say so, but I think you ought to know that the place is a fam is a favorite family haunt. I appreciate your concern, Becky, but we really do need to go there. Alright. Oh, good, Granny's asleep again. I don't think she'd be too keen on me directing you to a hotbed of criminal activity like that. Oh, uh, we don't need to worry about our safety, do we? Not that I'm scared or anything. <laughs> Good. Bravery is an admirable character trait, even if it can get you into trouble. So anyway, you know where Flatstone Street Station is, right? Just head north from the square in, from the, square in the front of the station. You'll see the casino eventually. Ah, I had a feeling it was somewhere around there. You did? How come? One of the family thugs was gotten that way north when we passed the station. Thought there might be something dodgy up there, but I couldn't get past him to see for myself. Well, you might be alright this time. Those thugs move around from post to post pretty often. Good to know. Yeah, it really doesn't sound like the best security plan, does it? Just go and see for yourself. There's a good chance we'll be able to pass now. I... Uh-oh. Becky, here's our guest. I'm sure I have better things to do than listen to you blather at them. No need to worry, madam. Becky was just giving us directions to our next destination. Oh, is that so? As long as she's being helpful. Alrighty, away we go. Bum, bum, boom, bum, bum. Um. Oh, you're the last mini game, aren't you? Look at the bird in the sky over there, Professor. What a beautiful color it is. That's no ordinary bird, Luke. It's a parrot. How do you suppose it got here? <gasps> no, they're gonna let me use my mic, aren't they? But I, I don't have a mic. All I have is white noise. Let's ask him. Hiya, Mr. Parrot. Where'd you come from? Oh, I think you may have, been, may have been a bit too eager there, my boy. You scared him off. Aww. I was just trying to be friendly. That was a future minigame, Luke. How dare you? I'm sorry, Professor. Look, the family we stand in guard over there is gone. Seems Becky's guess was spot on. Let's keep moving north. 
No, I keep moving, moving. Oh, another cutscene. Ooh, I'm loving this, bro. Oh. Oh. Flora? That doesn't look like Flora. Is it Flora? I can't even tell. Uh, <sighs> no, it's not. Someone you know, yeah. Professor? Huh? Well, that was weird. Professor? Oh. Oh, it's just beautiful, Herschel. Oh, do you really like it? <laughs> I don't just like it. I love oh, it. Oh, is it the pass? Thank you so much. Picking out the right gift ah. can be quite the puzzle. It's young Lucky lady. For me, every puzzle <laughs> has an answer. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that what you always oh, say? Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> yes, well. I've been thinking. Go on. If I were to get the teaching job, then we... Hmm? Well, mm. <clears throat> I'm listening, Herschel. Oh, um, <laughs> I'll tell you later. Come on now. Tell me more about these plans of yours. No, oh, it was nothing. Now let's eat before our food gets cold. Hey, you can't just change the subject. What are you talking about? <laughs> I did nothing of the sort. You <laughs> most certainly did. Oh, oh. Professor? Is something the matter, Professor? You look dazed. I, uh, I'm fine, Luke. I thought I saw. No, my eyes must have been playing tricks on me. Does that have something to do with that lady who just walked past? It's probably nothing. She just reminded me of someone I knew a long time ago. Oh no! I think I can tell where the sadness of this ending is going to come from now. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh man! That is one thing I do know about this game. My friend was like. Yo, the ending of this game is, uh, he said it's not, it's not sad in like a, um, like a, oh god, everybody dies, um, wait, what? Does my not remind you of anything, Professor? No, should it? It's not sad in like a everybody dies sort of way, um, but he said it's like almost a bittersweet ending that makes you kind of like, oh. so I have a feeling she's going to be the root cause of that. Ha! <laughs> And where do you think you two are going? On our way to meet someone at the Gilded Seven Casino. I see. Going to the casino to meet someone, are you? Interesting. Very interesting. Psst, Professor, I think this man is trying to intimidate us. Stop that whispering, boy. I'm right here, you know. Oops. Um, sorry, mister. Ha. Huh. Well, since you've apologized, I suppose I can overlook your rudeness this time. Sorry to impose, sir, but would, be, but would you be so kind as to let us pass? It's getting rather late. But of course, my good man. As soon as you solve this puzzle of mine, that is. Well, it's a good thing I love puzzles, then. Upon reflection, wait, 26? Shoot, I missed one. Choosing these three shapes were created by moving and rotating a mirror over a capital letter. Can you work out which one it was? I think that's it. That should do the trick. Did the mic quality get better for this game? Because honestly, they sound oh, so much sexy. clearer now, and it's kind of crazy. I don't know, maybe the the, the voiceover budget went up? I'm not entirely sure. Well done, you paint yourself well. So I'll provide you with a cryptic revival warning. Danger lurks at that hattie with about that hat of yours. You best watch yourself around here. Why is everyone so fixated on my hat? Do you, know, do you know someone else with a hat like mine? If I told you, it would kill all the suspense, wouldn't it? I'll leave that little mystery for you. Oh, Coco. Okay. Um, I haven't even, like, really taken a look at, uh, this next picture book, so... Oh. Wow, now that's a casino. I think it's safe to say we found the Gilded Seven. I can't wait to see what it looks like up close. <laughs> I don't think you're gonna be allowed in, Luke. Oh, hidden puzzle. There it is. Professor, look at me. I think I've stumbled across a hidden puzzle. Mr. 820. One of the five people shown below is a very unique nickname, Mr. A20. Rather odd moniker. I'm sure you'll agree, though apparently everybody who sees this person thinks it's just perfect. Well then, who is Mr. A20? Circle this person and press submit. 
This guy's bow tie is an eight. And, um, hmm. yeah. How about this? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. Is there, wait, uh, the shape of a gentleman's mustache. Oh! Ha! Huh. Okay, oh wow, I completely wrong, but sure. I found that with a piece of cake. Do people complain about, it's like, Luke saying the puzzles were hard, but they actually weren't. That completely ruins my... Where, what? Where's the other hint coins? Okay, two. Ah! I moved my, my game. Threw me off. All right. Inside we go. Good evening, sir. May I see your membership card, please? Membership card? The Gilded Seven Casino is a haven where society's finest ladies and gentlemen can gather. We check membership cards upon entry to ensure that less savory types are kept out. Hmm, this is certainly the first I've heard of such a policy. I don't suppose you'd be willing to make an exception for us. Well, your heart does show you to be a man of impeccable taste. Now we just need to test your intellect. If you can solve this puzzle, I'll let you in without a card. Just this once, mind. This family seems awfully focused on your hat as well. Naturally. Is there any greater proof of one's gentlemanly nature than a fine top hat? I don't think that's what he's talking about, Professor. A game of cards. Here's a painting of two players in fierce competition over a game of cards. At first glance, something seems strange, but occasionally people remark that they're really in fierce competition. Isn't this part of the painting strange? Certainly the part of the painting that, would, that people would find strange. Then touch submit. Oh, wait. I've got a good feeling about this one. Boom! Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, that's settled. Well, that's settled. That's right. Cards usually have their numbers displayed in the top left and bottom right corners, no matter how badly one's winning, therefore... It's a hard time to see. Yeah, exactly. Expertly solved, sir. You certainly earned the right to enjoy our exclusive facilities. Welcome to the Gilded Seven. Just look at these fountains and this floor. Giona must be filthy rich. It's gonna be Leighton, isn't it? He's the owner. I know you're excited, Luke, but do try to keep your voice down. Sorry, Professor. This place is just so impressive. I understand the feeling. It's also quite large. Finding your future self in here may prove difficult. Oh, never mind. There he is. So you're... He's the future me? It's good to finally meet you, Professor. Or rather, I suppose I should say it's nice to see you again. It's me, Luke Triton. Ne <laughs> wow. Alrighty. Hello, Luke. Oh, look at him! Oh my god! Um, hi, Professor. <laughs> You're talking to him. Ne this is going to take some getting used to. I can't believe how small I used to be. You're not that much bigger, to be honest. You're like the same height. Hey, I'm not that small. Ne so tell me. Why exactly did you go through such pains to bring us here? I'll be happy to tell you in just a moment. But before that, I'd ne just like to verify that I'm dealing with the real Professor Layton here. Who else would I be? Ne Allow me to explain. In my London, it's rare to find someone who doesn't know the name Herschel Layton. In fact, many imposters have come forth recently claiming to be him. Are you saying you think the Professor is a fraud? Professor, if you think back on our adventures together, you may recall Oh yeah, that's named true. Don Paolo. Yeah, Don Paolo does love to uh, dress up as people, doesn't he? As you know, he was a master of disguise. Dang right he is. How do I know the man before me now isn't Don Paolo in another of his costumes? Now that's just rubbish, and you know it! Is it now? He's tricked us before. Who's to say he couldn't do it again? <laughs> what if he was like, <laughs> like that time he masqueraded as me? <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, do, do you not get to that part in your life yet? Oh, shoot. Um, s spoilers? Uh, oh no. Uh, okay, don't get kidnapped, I, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if that actually happens. I'm just making a joke in case everybody's like, oh, he's been spoiled. Very well. I don't know, I'll play I'm just along. guessing. How do you propose I prove my identity? Is there really any any other way, Professor? There's only one way to prove that you're Leighton. It's quite simple, really. Hmm? Hmm? Professor, 
I challenge you to a battle of wits. Ooh. I accept. Whoa. Okay. What exactly do you have in mind? Oh, this track. As a cautious man, I'm sure you'd have questions about my identity as well. I therefore suggest that we each prove our identity to each other's satisfactions. To this end, I propose that we demonstrate the power of our respective intellects. I prepared a puzzle that can only be solved by someone as insightful as Professor Layton. Should you find the solution, I will give you the chance to present me with a similar challenge. If I am who I say I am, I should have no trouble solving whatever you throw my way, should I? Let's get started. Before us are four cards arranged according to the following set of conditions. First, a heart is next to a diamond. Second, a club is not next to a spade. Finally, a heart is directly to the right of a club. Using just these three conditions, I challenge you to find this spade amongst these four cards. Okay. Maybe that one. Yes, that is indeed the location of the spade. Impressive, Professor. Yep, I knew it, boys. B -b -b Yo, this song is lit! What is this? <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Now, if I may present you with a puzzle of my own design. Nothing would please me more. Oh, let's go. Good. I appreciate the idea behind your puzzle, so if you don't mind, I'd like to do something similar. Here are the conditions for my four cards. A club lies directly to the right of a heart. A diamond is on the far left or far right and has a heart next to it. Finally, a club is also on the far left or far right card. Are you able to find the spade using these conditions? Oh, I'm not choosing it myself. You almost had me there, Professor. But as you know, this puzzle is flawed. It's unsolvable. Is that so? Yes, I tried several solutions, but none work given the conditions you set forth. Oh, really? Tell me, did I ever state that the four cards on the table included one card from each suit? Huh. So the answer is, there is no spade. Oh! Precisely. This was a trick question, but it makes a pertinent point. In the puzzle you issued me, you failed to specify that the four cards included one from each su in each suit. Leaving in a loophole like that can make the puzzle unsolvable. The same omission can also open the door to alternate solutions. You intentionally presented me with a puzzle that, when examined closely, is actually incomplete. That was the real test you set out for me, was it not? To see if I would spot the loophole. It seems you're the genuine article, Professor. Ne I'm glad to see that I have finally convinced you. To be honest, I was convinced from the beginning. But I just couldn't pass up the opportunity to pit myself against my mentor in a battle of wits. Hmm. I'm flattered, I suppose. Ne so? Out with it! Why did you call us here? Oh. That, okay, I'm sorry, it's kind of weird, it's just, no more, you're alone, Thal had to leave. <laughs> there are too many eyes on us in here, there's a storm in the back where we can talk, follow me. Alrighty, mystery solved. The young man signing himself Luke Triton turned out to be an older Luke from ten years in the future. He wrote to his old trusted teacher to request his aid. Um... Uh, Professor, you gonna talk to me? You don't remember what I used to do. Hint coins, hint coins. Alright, I've gotten everything. Professor Layton, Luke, welcome to the land in the future. Hmm. Still not convinced. You saw Dr. Stra Dr. Schrader, didn't you? You must have noticed the toll that time has taken on your mentor. Yes, we saw him. And what a fair London. You've walked around enough now to see that she's changed. Could you imagine there's a there being a casino in this sleepy part of town back in your time? Yeah, everything's changed. What's happened in this city? A genius appeared. An evil genius who turned the city on its head. Now I know the way this is going. Don Paolo took over the city, didn't he? Don Paolo? Oh no, I'm talking about a truly brilliant man, Professor Layton. Someone the three of us all know quite n oh, th Someone the three of us all know quite well. Well, if it's not Don, Don Paolo, then who is it? What do you think, Professor? I really couldn't say. Hmm, really? Who is it? I've just gotta know! His name is Herschel Layton. The evil genius is you, Professor. What? Oh. 
was afraid you'd say that. That can't be- that can't possibly be right! I'm sorry to say that it is. They call him the devil in the top hat, and he rules London from the shadows. It's common knowledge for people in this part of London. <laughs> well, there's that mystery. In the future, the city of London is in the thrall of an evil latent. The sight of the professor, who looks just the same as his future self, is enough to spark fear among the local people. Tell me more, Luke. What? Well, I don't know any more than you do, Professor. No, I meant the other Luke. Goodness, this is getting rather complicated, isn't it? Tell me, Luke, how did I rise to rule over all of London? Where to begin? Here, Professor, surely you remember this. Uh... Yeah, okay, I remember that. That was the last episode. Of course! This is an article about the accident that happened just the other day. <laughs> yes, to you, I suppose it was a recent event. But it's been... But here, it's been a full ten years since that fateful day. Whoa. It was the start of a dark period for London. With the Prime Minister missing, Parliament was in utter chaos, you see. Yes, everyone in Parliament is in a state of panic. Um, in our time, I mean. Professor, you witnessed that with your own eyes. You witnessed with your own eyes the accident that changed London forever. The time machine presentation was a complete failure. Yes, both the Prime Minister and that scientist. You mean Dr. Sangan? Yes, that's right. Several people disappeared in the blast, including those two. Seems likely they were killed by the force of the explosion. Didn't the paper say that a few of Dr. Stangit's assistants had also vanished in the blast? That's the story in the press. But would, what would you say if I if I told you Stangin was still alive? I'd say it's impossible! Then you'd be wrong. Dr. Stangin escaped the blast, but he went to hiding to avoid reprisals after the experiment. The man was responsible for the loss of our national leader, after all. This spread for a place to lit. Bleh. Ah, desperate for a place to lie low, the doctor was given shelter by an unlikely person. You, Professor. Me? Why would I aid the man responsible for this pandemonium? That is something I have never understood. Oh! That's kind of creepy. In the months that followed the explosion, you slowly grew distant from me. You began consorting with figures from the criminal underworld. The Professor? Never! Don't be so sure. Time is a way of changing people, Luke. It was clear that something about Stangen's research captivated you, Professor. You couldn't stop talking about time travel. You seem obsessed with the idea of changing the past. Changing the past? Dr. Stangen was very interested in continuing his research, but he needed financial backing to do it, so he used his superior intellect to assume control of London's underworld. No. Of course, there were those who tried to stop you, but none were a match for Professor Layton. Before long, you were ranking in cash from all sorts of dodgy businesses. With all the funding he needed, it wasn't long before Stungan completed his time machine. Time machine? You mean... That's right, the time machine and the clock on Midland Road. Ah, I see. Though I suppose complete is the wrong word, as the machine is far from complete. How so? It doesn't allow the user to select a destination. You can select neither the place nor the time you wish to travel to. In fact, it would be more accurate to describe it as a sort of tunnel between two periods of time. A wormhole! Precisely. And by sheer chance, this wormhole opened in the clock shop between and crosses the ten years between our two times. This gives us the ability to move back and forth between your present and mine. So you use the wormhole to get the message to us and to bring us back here. One thing is bothering me, though. The wormhole is obviously very important to my future self. Surely a latent of this era must keep a close eye on it. How did you gain access? I'll get to that, but right now there's more pressing business I'd like to attend to. Go on then, tell us why you called us here. Always one step ahead of me, eh? You haven't lost your touch, Professor. I wish to enlist your help in stopping Herschel Layton. You want me to stop myself? Even as we speak, the other Layton is working to build a fully operational time machine. He's been ducking back in your time to gather every bright scientist working in time travel. But why bother going into the past to find scientists? There must be plenty here in this era. Actually, many of the experts in the field were lost when Sungun's presentation went awry. Layton had no choice but to travel back to the time before the blast in order to gather talent. Hmm... Things are already bad, but if Layton manages to build a fully functional time machine, who knows what could happen. Someone has to stop him from completing his scheme, but the only person who might succeed is... Me. That is what you are going to say, is it not? Exactly. We have to fight fire with fire. No one else stands a chance against him. But how? I'm not familiar with this future London. I won't even know where to start looking. That's one obstacle we'll have to overcome together. Layton's actions are shrouded in secrecy. His base of operations, however, is well known. We can start our search for him there. You mean this casino isn't future professor's headquarters? 
No, this establishment is just one of the many ways he makes money. His headquarters are in the heart of Chinatown. Well, let's visit the place and see if we can learn anything more. I must admit, Luke, there is still quite a bit about this situation that I find dubious. However, I see that the only way to, go to, to get to the bottom of this is to go and find this man claiming to be me. <laughs> I thought you'd say that, Professor. Don't forget me, I'm coming too. Of course you are. If I can't count on myself for help, who can I count on? Yeah, about what you just said kind of makes me feel dizzy. <laughs> well, I hope you get used to it soon. I'm going to need your help in stopping the evil Leighton too. Oh yes, there's one more interesting fact I should mention, Professor. Yes. There's no record of a scientist matching Dr. Stangen's name and description. It's a false name. Is that so? Whoever he was, he took pains to hide his real identity from the people at the presentation. Now that you mention it, few of the guests seem to know the man. What would motivate Stun Stangen to use a false name? What was he planning? Another interesting question we may hope to answer along the way. It just doesn't make any sense. What are you thinking, Professor? We can talk more on the way. For now, we should head back to Flatstone Street. Is it going to be someone late and new, and that's why you helped him, maybe? New mystery? Yep, I thought so. Oh! Oh, dang! Oh! Oh! oh. What? What is going on? Okay. Too too many things. The future Herschel Leighton is a crime lord who terrorizes London with his gang of thugs, known and feared by Londoners as the Devil in the Top Hat. How could this model English gentleman have turned into such a monster? Dr. Stangen is the scientist who unveiled the time machine at the presentation, but no records exist of a scientist with that name. It must be somebody else using an alias to cover up his true identity. Who is he really? Um, a grown-up Luke used a time machine to send the letter back to the present, requesting the help of his former teacher, Professor Layton, in, or in rescuing the chaotic future city of London. Shady characters dressed in gray are members of a gang under, under the control of the future Layton, the boss of the Layton underworld. I think that's... F that's the person... Oh, look, there's, um, there's future Luke traveling with us now. Uh, the, the next mystery is going to be the girl that Leighton was like, <gasps> when he saw. Um... Wait, what did he say? I bet the professor would be a dab hand at poker if he tried. Oh. Oh, there you are, boss. Uh-oh. Oh. oh. Oi! What are you doing wearing the boss's get-up? Is your idea of a joke? No, no, not at all. <laughs> Come to think of it, I don't think I've seen any of you round here before. Yes, well, we don't often get a chance to visit this fine establishment of- Yo, yours. why did the soundtrack get so good for this game? What is this? To know about that. But I'm gonna need you to come with me for some questioning. This way, you free. Uh, professor, run away while you can. <laughs> oh no, Yuri Lowenthal! Oh no! Uh, quickly, you two, this way. I kind of wish I was playing Spider-Man, because then I'd be playing two Don't games with Yuri Lowenthal. Yeah. Don't let, let him escape! escape. <laughs> Hey, look, that other guy's wearing Professor Layton's outfit. Oh my god. <laughs> it's okay, they're lasers. It's not bullets, don't worry. We surround you, Professor. Calm yourself, Luke. I have a plan. But wait! Where are you going? Go, Leighton. Do you see a way out of this? I do, but I'll need your help. No. <laughs> it's a puzzle. Build a coin gun from the parts of this disassembled slot machine to help our heroes fight back. Rotate the parts to fit them into the checkered square below. You must use all the parts, and none of them are going to overlap. Hurry! Oh, God. And this is a different puzzle theme. There we go. I've got a good feeling about this one. Boom! What now we have it? our own gun. Kill them all! <laughs> Boom! Get coined! 
this song is really good too. God dang man, the soundtrack in this game. I say that was a close one. We gave them a taste of their own medicine. Okay, in this cutscene, I don't remember you helping. Ne Look, you're me, so that means I get some assisting. <laughs> oh, is that so? That's very interesting logic. Ne okay, in that scene, he looks a lot older, but like, oh, big score. I don't know, in, in, in the actual, oh, is that it? Oh, that's a short episode. Um, I don't know, he looks kind of not, um, not that much older. The enigmatic future. Huh, feels good to get some short episodes again, guys. So why are we headed to now then, um, Mr. Triton? Please call me anything but Mr. Triton. It's really strange being called that by myself. It's pretty awkward for me too, but what else am I supposed to call you? I don't see why I can't both be called Luke. Should the need to distinguish yourself arise, you can be Big Luke. You can be Big Luke and you can be Little Luke. I'm not too keen on Little Luke, but it's better than all this confusion. Oh, the boss, Professor. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance, Little Luke. Oh no, the pleasure is all mine, Big Luke. <laughs> now where were we? Ah oh, yes, there was something I need to check up on. Professor, did you pass a restaurant in the shopping arcade on the way to the casino? The one near the arcade's southern exit. That's the one. We'll head there first. A friend of mine is waiting for us. Alrighty. Um, let's do this course real quick, and then we will, uh... Okay, if I did this all correctly, should be good to go now. Oh, look at these graphics, bro. It's so good. I love this style of graphics. Honestly, the graphics in this game and... Oh, dude, my mic about to fall over it now. Graphics in this game and... Diabolical Box were both really good. I really love the style they're going with, and I don't know, the 3D looks okay from what I've seen, but not amazing. Alright, got that one down. Oh, is Evil Layton gonna give us the last one? I didn't even think about that. I always thought it was just gonna be us. But, uh, anyways, guys, I'm gonna wrap up today's episode here for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Stick around to see more awesome, awesome gameplay. Until the end, as always, I'm really into this so far. I can't wait to see where it goes from here, and, uh, yeah. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.